What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're all doing well today. It's a very rare occasion when a track comes out of the blue that I'm unaware of that it's being worked on. Uh, since I've been part of the main track making Discord that the Earthworks have created, there's a lot of like big projects and compounds I get to see like, behind the scenes of. However, this one has kind of come out of the blue. Now, this tra track itself is called Finn's Farm, and it's created by Dirt Push Collective, which I believe, flying around, having a look at the uh, like the objects and the system decal tents, etc. I believe this is uh, to do with Jay Mertz, and I believe Jay Gas as well. I swear I saw like a black and white Supercross picture being posted in a media channel a while back, which I believe... Is showing off this supercross track over here in the background now this uh well finn's farm consists of two tracks it's got a national track and a supercross track uh, the national track itself is long and windy it's got some uh, big old booters on it by the looks of it and also over this back corner here if i fly above you can see we've got this little loop here which is meant to be like a turn track which can be ridden in both directions so that's cool a nice little new unique feature that i've not seen on a Im implement into a nationals track before and then also we've got the supercross track however this supercross track is basically double the length of normal supercross tracks and it's kind Kind of two halves joined together by like a long sand section and apparently half of this is a replica of one of the upcoming smx or super motocross tracks and i'm very excited for smx i believe we are doing it in mx bike which is going to be really cool and i'm especially excited for the la coliseum you know kind of jumping up going past the stands up out the stadium and back again all exciting stuff so without further ado let's hop in spin some laps and see what this all entails if you've been putting off buying that new MX gear or you're just looking for some new daily MX related clothing, then head on over to fxrracing.com. Code MXPR underscore Linz15 at checkout will give you 15% off all motocross and lifestyle products. This code is applicable to the European, Swedish and Norwegian websites, not Canada or the USA. And whilst I've got your attention, you may as well subscribe to the channel. It's just one click of a button and it puts a big old smile on my face. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So we are on our trusty steed, as always, today on the old Yamaha 450. Uh, riding some of that updated 2024 FXR gear. And uh, I finally took the plunge. And on the Bike shop, there's been these... Uh, some of you are going to absolutely destroy me on the pronunciation here. How is it pronounced for these boots? Is it Gurn? Is it Garnays? I've heard some people say Gay Ernie if they want to take the mick as well. I didn't know Ernie swung that way, but apparently he does. So please correct me. I know everyone's probably going to have a different opinion, but I, I know there's someone out there that will hands down 100% know the correct, correct pronunciation of Garnet boots. And I'm hoping I'm doing it justice. Um, so we're rocking around today and I'm excited. You know, I love my Supercross. I really, really do. And to be fair, if half of this Supercross track is meant to be a replica of uh, upcoming SMX track, then we could even be getting some sneaky early practice in too. Now, I don't want to send anything too hard just yet. Again, if uh, if you've missed like the last couple of videos or live streams, the reason that I do not have Max HUD on my screen anymore, uh, or Reshade either, this is all kind of raw. I might I might change like the colours and stuff in the editing process, but uh, right now this is all just raw MX Bytes gameplay for me. But the reason I don't have Max HUD on is because of game crashes. They have been kind of more and more prevalent for me recently, uh, especially in like the aerial races, the big 30 man plus races where you know there's money on the line for points at the end of the season. And for the sake of me not getting too frustrated or maybe losing out on decent prize money due to some game crashes, I thought I would remove all those extra mods and plugins from my game to hopefully give myself as best a chance of possible with the game not crashing so there you go hopefully that answers any questions because I, I am getting it a lot and i thought i'd get it out of the way early here uh, one thing that is a little bit of a bummer though is usually when i'm learning tracks like this for the first time because this is all just raw like gameplay for the first time i've spun zero laps on these tracks so far i, I use the max hud a lot more so to know what's coming up next because there's a couple of blind turning doubles on this track already that you've seen and I have jumped off the track once already and usually I just use the max hud as a way of kind of knowing where to turn the bike on takeoff uh, so I, I please forgive me if I make some mistakes or jump the wrong way I will say straight off the bat I don't even know if we've done half lap yet this supercross track I like how peaky the jump phases are I really really do uh, it looks like you can recover halfway through a section if you get it wrong so if maybe you slide out a little bit in the corner and you have to double in then it gives you the opportunity to then turn that into a triple whereas on some tracks because of how this game works and just the traction overall and no like true seat bouncing mechanics it seems like a lot of the time if you get out of a rhythm and you start doubling 
you then have to double the rest of the way, which can be a bit of a pain in the bum, especially if you're on a 450. I feel like if you're on a 450, I mean, if I'm just comparing to like IRL, a lot of them boys, especially in like super deep ride corners, if they have to tiptoe through, as soon as they get the bikes in a straight line, they actually just sit down, bang the throttle open, and it, feel, it looks like it's effortless for them to get up and over at, like a triple coming out of a corner. So I'd, I'd, I'd love to have proper seat bouncing mechanics in this game, although that I think would come with its own group of problems. Uh, I think we'd then end up like quintupling our way through rhythm sections and such, so maybe it's best that we don't. Maybe it's best we just try and rail all the corners as hard as we can and use momentum to get over the jumps. Um, but so far... I'm liking the flow of this. It's not often that I get to ride a new Supercross track and not wad myself ten times over. Oh, please, please don't crash as soon as I say it. Please, please. Oh. <laughs> I want to turn around and do this. I love rhythm sections where there's like multiple tables to go on and off back to back. I want to triple a little bit further. Go on, 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 off. I love that. And it's actually when I was flying around in the preview beforehand, I... I kept my eye out for those on-offs because they looked quite uh, short in comparison to others that I've seen. So you have to be very, very precise jumping up and onto those. Otherwise, you're not going to get the distance. That, I feel I, that could be quadable. <laughs> okay, right. I'm going to take my time here and I'm going to see if I can quad into this rhythm section. I'm going to keep it in second gear so hopefully we we'll get more drive out the corner. Uh, <coughs> yeah, we're setting a track marker down. That's how serious we are. Quad God. Oh, easy. Light work. And okay, we've jumped a little bit too far this time. Uh, oh, survive. Okay, I don't know. I'm not going over the handlebars there. So, yeah, you can cord into rhythm sections. Love that. Nice that it's uh, rewarding. It looks like there's there's probably some big old lines you can hit here. You might even be able to go a little bit. Oh, land the back foot, land the back foot, land the back foot. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, Poboso. I've Yeah, I think there's a lot of huge, like, booter lines that you could have the potential to send. Uh, I think. So, to give a little background as well, uh, I believe Finn's farm relates to uh, the Finn who plays MX Bikes and is, I would say, in my opinion, one of the top three fastest 250 riders in the game right now. Uh, has the most unique riding style in the game. So, for anyone that's unaware, Finn uh, doesn't actually sit down anywhere other than when he's scrubbing, like sitting down right at the very tops of jumps to kind of soak the, uh, the bike up into them and just kind of keep your momentum going forwards, keeping the bike low to the ground. When it comes to like straights, uh, breaking bumps, corners, etc., never sits down at all. And it's something that I found myself implementing in my own gameplay more and more as of recently. I find, especially on rough tracks, and especially when the road kicks in, if, uh, you, if you're sat down in the corner and your suspension compresses a little bit, it will cause the bike to like wobble about a bit, which uh, can be very frustrating because then it causes your bike to almost stand itself up and then go in a straight line rather than following the rut as you'd wish. Now, when you stand up, it does not do that. So I find myself standing up and kind of leaning forward slash to the outside peg a bit more recently. Uh, so definitely give that a go if you're struggling in, in the rough stuff and you feel like your bike just won't settle down. Yeah, try standing up a little bit more and I, I promise you it will uh, it'll make a world of difference. You'll rail corners that you never thought you would before. And I, I wouldn't say that's directly attributed to uh, to Finn's gameplay as such. It's not like I watched him and went, oh, let me try that a bit more. It was just me experimenting and finding out, actually, this, this guy could be onto something. <laughs> and I find more often than not, on streams these days, uh, when we're on a particularly rough track, I find us kind of mentioning Finn more often than not, saying, oh, this, this suits Finn's riding style, etc. And it does make me laugh because it just makes me think of... Like the a lot of AMA these days. Please don't take offence to this, Americans. No offence is meant. It's simply an observation on my end. I feel like 99% of the time when we're racing and watching American races, and there's a European guy doing well, the commentators always, always seem to say, "Yeah, this is a really European-style track, so suits the European riders." And it's like, well, not every track in America can suit the European riders, surely. <laughs> Surely some of them have to suit the Americans as well, being in America. Uh, that's just something that I picked up on that does make me laugh from time to time. So hopefully no one takes offense to that. Uh, if you guys notice that as well, then be funny coincidence. Um, but yeah, I feel like standing up on this game, definitely more beneficial. M more, a lot, definitely more so on the, the rougher tracks. You know, any any track like your casual farms, walnuts, like Forest, Paletta, for example... They're very straightforward and, and flat. So any corners like this I'm going around now, 
where it's flat in terms of no braking bumps or ruts, it's just a very slight banking or a berm, you can sit down and wait the outside peg, no problem at all. It won't cause you any issues. Uh, so on a track like this, probably won't even recognize it as much. I do get people asking the question a lot on should they use auto sit like, and auto lean? Are those hindrances? I believe they are because there's a lot of situations on this game where you don't always want to be sat down in every corner and you don't always want to be waiting the outside peg in every corner. Uh, but that's just my two cents of whether you want to listen to that or not. That is completely up to you. That is your prerogative. Um, I feel like I've, I've just realised I've spent an entire 10 minutes just spinning laps of this Supercross track, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I know I'm, I'm probably not doing too much justice because I don't think I've had one full clean lap just yet. But there's a lot to remember here, like lots of jumps that look quite similar on the face but then have slightly different angles off the takeoff. I definitely think that a 450 might be a bit overkill unless you're willing to experiment to really try and hit some of these, these big lines. Uh, I've also not had a good run through these whoops yet I don't think. The whoops are very straightforward which I will um, I'll give, I'll give a pass to because when it comes to tracks that release on the store you kind of want them to be inclusive of every player on the game you don't want it just to be like super hardcore for the guys like myself who have no life and do nothing but play mx bikes uh, so for the more intermediate slash beginner level guys you've got a super cross track here that uh, first of all can really help you improve on your timing for rhythm sections uh, but then secondly as well you've got kind of like easier whoops and it's more of like an, an introduction to it but then for one of the top level guys like myself you've kind of got the challenge then of trying to string an entire lap together with quite peaky obstacles and I like it. I really, really do. I think this Super Cross Track is a very good uh, job well done and I like that it's a slightly longer one. I like that there's hybrid aspects to it. Can I quad this? Oh, okay. I really didn't even have to hit that fast and I got over that no problem. Uh, so there's Super Cross Track. Let me quickly make our way over to the motocross track and we'll see if it lives up to its description of having some big old moon booters. Right, that looks like a landing there, so we're just going to join the track at this random point and hopefully uh, hopefully we're on to something. So let's see how this goes. We got a little... Oh, God, actually. That landing looked like a takeoff. But we're going to keep riding with it, going to keep rocking it and see if uh, see if we're correct. Oh, again, Max Hard. I think Max Hard would tell me the right way to go. There's a little arrow on the finish line on the map that tells you which direction you want. And I don't think this national track is meant to be a difficult one by any means. Uh, oh, hang on. Let me check up here. I have no idea. Uh, yes, we were going backwards. Oh, God damn it. I mean, they implemented a turn track it, later on, on the other side of the map to where I am right now, to uh, be ridden both directions, but I don't think the Nationals track as a whole is meant to be ridden both ways. That corner there makes a whole lot more sense this way around, so I probably should have gathered that. And uh, even though the decals look a little bit on the sandy side, it is not sand traction, which I'm here for. Uh, I think uh, we're getting a lot of sand tracks these days, just throwing that out there, so it's uh, it's quite nice having a soft soil track again for us to, to play and enjoy. It seems like... These jump faces so far, you can carry a lot of speed off of them and just scrub them super hard. I'm kind of scared of just jumping way too far and flat landing like that because you kind of know how the front ends are on these bikes at the moment. But again, once I've probably spun a couple of laps and I know how big these jumps are, we should be A-OK. -okay. That's a big old floaty boot. I love that one. And then we've got some more of that little flowy sand rollers to double and maybe triple our way through. And this here is the turn track. So you can kind of oh, hit the rough stuff through here. Struggle to see that rut a little bit, just where I've got no reshade on now. I feel like the game's so much like less... It doesn't like pop as much as it used to for me, which is uh, very annoying. I do miss my reshade. So what we can do here is, as we come up this straight, we can either carry on straight ahead to carry on the Nationals track, or we can turn left here and redo that little loop that we just done to spin lap after lap. Alternatively, we can turn around and we can hit this loop this way. And then we'd rejoin the track here and go straight on. So good stuff there. Also, if you can see off in the distance, we've got some like targets, like shooting targets there. Not seen that done in the environment of a track or area before. So again, big W, some nice uh, creativeness, some nice unique environment design as a whole. It's, oh god, barely getting to get over that. Coming up a little bit short, but that's fine. The bike was landed straight, so no problem at all. And again, looking at this track straight away, it doesn't strike me as particularly difficult. I think the most difficult part of it will be just getting your jump timing down. It's got some little sand rollers dotted about here and there. Can I jump into that one? Ooh, almost. And then double out. Double again. Double into this corner. God, I love 
It, it gives me a sand vibe without being sand traction, which I suppose is a cool concept itself. It just means you'll be able to ca carry more corner speed overall. Uh, you'll have more grip in the corners too, so you won't be having to kind of balance your lean angle quite so much. That, that's the main difference between soft soil and, and sand on this game is sand in terms of overall speed it's not that much different you just can't lean the bike over as much as you would normally because you just risk either the front end or the back end sliding out from you uh, but other than that it's usually quite similar so the way you'd ride this probably to be fair again matching fin style oh my christ please land this please land this oh okay yeah matching fin style of just standing up everywhere like it seems to be but no real issue of sand up in these corners. I'm going to try and check up on these bumps here to make this inside rut. Lovely, and then make this inside rut as well. I think these ruts here, I, I think what's making them difficult to see is it's just where it's like got shadows on them from the surrounding trees. And I think once you spin a few laps, especially if you've got multiple people around here and you get some of that road kicking in, I think they'll be uh, much easier to see. Although I am playing this on zero road right now. So there will be no showcasing of, of a road on this track. Oh, that is not a jump that you can really scrub from the inside. So, and that's on a 450. So, 250 boys, I think you're going to have to go around the outside there a little bit to really get the, the drive to get up and over that. But, yeah, quite a straightforward Nationals track here. Nothing difficult about it at all. Quite nice and flowy. Uh, the ruts are a little bit on the smaller side. But, again, I think that's probably built in a way where it can enable the road to kick in and hold you a little bit better. Oddly enough, that that's one of my favourite corners. The way that... It's kind of dug into the ground, even though it's not a massive rut. It's more of a, a banking as such. It just the bike sits in it really, really nicely, which I'm quite surprised by. I, I thought that honestly the bike would be. What was it? What did that? Hang on, what did that sign just say? I swear I, I I get so distracted. I'm like a like a magpie when they see something shiny. What's this? Oh no, it's just system decal slash dirt push. Okay, cool. Uh, so for uh, for uh, Mr. J Gas and J Mertz, if if you do end up watching this, uh, hope well, hopefully first of all, if if you have if it is both of you that have been uh, in talks to get this all said and done, that I hope you've enjoyed me showcasing uh, your track on a video. But also, if there is anybody else that's part of the uh, Dirt Push Collective that I am unaware of or I've missed out, then uh, please do let me know, because I like people getting the credit they deserve. And I think overall, this is a really well-built track. Like, it's fun and flowy. I would definitely say uh, that the Supercross track, in my opinion, blows the Nationals one out of the water. But I am also aware that I am very biased towards like super cross tracks, especially the longer ones. So it's not just like 50 second lap time and you're done. That that track I could definitely see myself spending a lot of time on trying to grind and learn all of the fastest lines and then just trying to put a clean lap together. It seems very difficult to do that. But then it's, it's a weird combination. I think it might be the layout of it where you've got these kind of blind turning doubles that make it more difficult than it feels like it should be because the obstacles themselves aren't hard by any means but i have a feeling that it's because of the length and the layout that adds that level of difficulty which i personally enjoy some people may hate it i on the other hand do not a uh, massive fan of the actual jump faces and the way they kick you high up in the air and they and enable you to be able to hit some quads if you're feeling brave enough and i think what they have done on this compound as a whole is make something that will work very well regardless on what bike you use some tracks, I know when I was making my track, for example, I was very heavily 450 focused. And then it wasn't until I gave the track to Smigdamp to test and he rode it on a 250 that he was like, yeah, that some of these jumps are literally impossible to clear. So then I had to go and rework it and I literally didn't have 250 bikes in mind. So in terms of this track being open to all abilities and all different bikes, very, very good job. Um, so massive pat on the back there. Uh, I think that's going to do it for me today. Again, I'm, I love being surprised because I, I didn't know about this track other than one picture and there was no mention of it being part of like a, a bigger kind of compound slash facility overall. And it was all black and white anyway, so I had no idea what the final result would look like. So massive W's, really good fun, lovely surprise. And here's to hopefully some more in the future. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you could please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new, I'd really, really appreciate it. Have a lovely rest of the day, whatever you're up to, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.